All right, good morning, class. We're trying something new this week. So today's lesson is 5.08, stratified sample. Our aim is how can we draw samples from a population using a stratified sampling method. So today we'll be talking about that method. You're going to want to continue with this overview and this video once you complete the do now. So we're going to get into it directly from there. So looking at the do now. Mr. Rubin wants to sample his statistics class on their feelings about his teaching. He decides to select 10 random students to take a survey. Since the class is, the classes are 60% male and 40% female, he decides to take the first six boys and the first four girls sampled to complete the survey. Is this an example of an SRS? Why or why not? So what you should be thinking about is with an SRS, with a simple random sample, all you're concerned with is how big is the population? How many samples do you need from that population? And then how do you get those samples? Notice, in this example, he begins to talk about the breakdown of the group. Not just how many students and how many samples, but how many students are there, how many males are there, how many females are there. Notice, 60% males, 40% females in a sample of 10, that gives you six boys, four girls. 60% boys, 40% girls. So this is not a simple random sample. All right, so now definitions time. So stratified sample, a sampling method which a population is broken into homogeneous groups called strata. From there, samples are randomly drawn that are representable to the population. So looking at the do now, right? We split, the class was split, the population was split, 60% males, 40% females. Therefore, when we drew those 10 samples, it was representable to our actual population. There were 60% males in our in our sample, there were 40% females in our sample, just like the population. In this instance, the strata are gender, but it doesn't have to be. Here is a diagram of what a stratified sample looks like. So you have your population. In this instance, with four groups, you can think of it as grade levels, right? You could, these could be your freshmen, these could be your sophomores, these could be your juniors, these could be your seniors. Therefore, if you're picking from each group, you want it to be representative. And the simple random sample from each group combines to make your sample. So again, looking back at the do now, you would that once you broke it into groups and figured out how many of each group you needed, so the six boys, the four girls, you would do a simple random sample to get those six bo boys, four girls. So why would we use a stratified method? Well, suppose we had a sample, an opinion for such a grade-wide trip. Boys and girls may have different ideas of the trip. In theory, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors could also also have different ideas of the trip. So by breaking them into groups by gender, or breaking them into groups by grade level, and sampling based on the population, we would eliminate the chances of an inaccurate sample, right? Um, if we were talking movies, and we were trying to decide what movie to watch it <clears throat> in a class, the boys may want to watch a sports-based movie, the girls may want to watch an adventure, traveling, history-based movie. Different opinions, different people, so you want to make sure that you're getting those opinions accurately. And this is big, but why stratified? Because a decrease in sampling variability is the main benefit. And when we talk sampling variability, what we're saying is if we were to take 10 samples from the same population, we want them to be similar. They may not be exact, but we want them to be similar. So if we were drawing from the school's population, right, and we were asking the opinion on the school lunch, we wouldn't want one sample saying 60% of those students like the school lunch, and then a second sample, only 20% of the students. We want them to all try to be closely related. That way we can use it as a much bigger analysis. Okay, so you're going to pause here. You're going to go on, you're going to complete the guided examples, and then when you refer back to this slide and this video, um, you'll continue onwards. So now let's look at this guided practice, right? So we're trying to find out what students think of the cafeteria food. After speaking to the cafeteria employees, you believe the male and female students have differing opinions on the food. How could you adjust your sampling procedure from an SRS to a stratified sample to account for this disparity? So 
what we'd want to do, and if you said something a little different, it's okay, but what you want to realize is rather than draw samples from this whole population, you would first break them down. You would break it into the male population and the female population. Depending on what percentage of each there are, you would then figure out how many samples you need from those groups, and then you would draw samples from them to get your true sample. So in reality, this would be like drawing two separate simple random samples. Drawing from the females, drawing from the males, putting them together, and that would be your sample. So in this case, right, suppose our school is 60% male and 40% female. We want a sample of 20 students. How many should we have of each? Well, let's break it down. So 60% of 20 samples must be male. So 0.6 6 times 20, which is 0.6 is 60% as a decimal, you would get 12 male students. What that means is if 40% of that 20 must be female, 20 times 0.4 is 8 males. So then in total, you have 20 samples like the problem suggested. 60% male, which is 12 male students, 40% female, which is 8 male students. You would then sample those 20 students and get their opinions on the cafeteria food. <clears throat> so let's review. What are the things to consider with a stratified sample? One, you need to make sure you know what your population is and what the strata or what the groups are. Number two, you need to know what the breakdown is. Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? 70-30? Whatever it may be. Third, you need to know how many samples you need from that population. Is it 20? Is it 30? Is it 40? And then finally, you need to figure out how many samples you need from each strata and then how you would do your sample, simple random sample to get those. All right, guys, feel free to reach out with any questions, but that is the gist of it.